Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today I thought we could talk about some new book releases in 2023 that are on my radar. So this is actually the very first video I've done on my channel dedicated to new releases and that is for the simple reason that I typically don't pay attention to new releases and I don't anticipate them. That's why I'm calling this video new book releases on my radar in 2023 not anticipated because I almost never read a book as it comes out. So I'm not making this video as some type of thing to look back on and say okay how many of my anticipated releases did I read? No this is purely informational. Even so this isn't meant to be comprehensive. There are so many many books coming out in 2023 and I of course picked the ones that look the most interesting to me and so I wanted to share that with all of you in case you have not heard that these books were coming out. I'm not going to be including sequels in this video to series that I haven't started yet but want to or series that I've started but I'm not caught up on. It seems like there are a lot of great sequels coming out in 2023 but I can't really say that they're on my radar or that they are anticipated for 2023 if I don't believe that I'm going to be starting the series anytime soon or be caught up in the series anytime soon. Additionally, as I was reviewing this list, it looks like a lot of the releases that I have are for the first half of the year. I have very few books in July, August, and September. I don't know if that's just because no books are releasing later in the year that I'm interested in or if maybe they just haven't announced those books yet, which is entirely possible. So the releases I'm mentioning are pretty much going to stop in September. I'm sure that y'all are way more aware of some of the 2023 releases than I am. Like I said, this is maybe meant to put some things on your radar that might not otherwise be there. Since these are new releases and I don't know terribly much about them, I'm not going to be able to speak very intelligently about what they are about. I will try to give you as much information as I can. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, starting with January, of course, the very first book that I want to mention is The Stolen Heir by Holly Black. So this is the first book in a new duology that is a continuation basically of the Folk of the Air trilogy. In this story you're following Oak who in the trilogy was just a child. He's essentially the king heir to Elfheim and I think you're going to kind of see him, follow him and see his journey potentially rising to power. I very much enjoyed the Folk of the Air trilogy. The third book was a little bit of a letdown but I'm totally willing to continue on in the duology. This is scheduled to release on January 3rd. To my knowledge all of the release dates that I'm giving you in this video are US release dates so they could be released on different dates in other countries. These are the dates that I'm getting from Goodreads and they are accurate at the point of filming this video. Another book releasing on January 3rd is The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. Now Rachel Hawkins writes what I would call fluffy suspense thrillers. If suspense thrillers had a fluffy subgenre kind of like contemporaries do, I would consider them fluffy. They are quick, fast paced, they are a good time, they're basically candy, they don't really give you anything of substance and you're still hungry after you read them, like you wanted more. But I had a really great time with The Wife Upstairs. Reckless girls was okay and I'm willing to see what she does with the villa. So a really quick blurb it says from New York Times bestselling author Rachel Hawkins comes a deliciously wicked gothic suspense set at an Italian villa with a dark history for fans of Lucy Foley and Ruth Ware. So I am definitely going to go ahead and give this one a shot and hers is one of the first books releasing in 2023. Next I have Just the Nicest Couple by Mary Kubica. If you watched the video where I talked about the authors that I want to try in 2023 Mary Kubica is one of them because I saw this new release and and it intrigued me enough that I wanted to go ahead and officially put her on the authors to try. From what I understand about this story is it follows two couples and the first one Nina and Jake. Jake has gone missing and Nina is frantically looking for him and Lily who is a really good friend of Nina's and her co-worker thinks that she might have been the last person to see Jake before he went missing. But when Lily confesses all of this to her husband Christian kind of make a deal that nobody can know what actually happened leading up to Jake's disappearance. So Nina is frantically looking for him. Lily might have been the last person to see him alive. She might be holding secret she might know more than she's saying and you're kind of following their journey. I always love a great domestic suspense. It sounds like there's going to be two couples with secrets who knows what happens who knows what's going on and I'm definitely down to give it a try should I decide that Mary Kubica is an author for me and this one is releasing on the 10th of January if I didn't already say that. Also releasing on the 10th is All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham. I really enjoyed her debut A Flicker in the Dark and so when I saw that this was releasing next year I definitely wanted to go ahead and add it to my list. So I believe this follows a mother whose child was taken out of his crib one night and they haven't been able to find him and over the past couple of years since his disappearance she has really had a hard time functioning and she hasn't really been able to sleep and in an effort to shake loose new leads she agrees to be interviewed by a true crime podcaster but this podcaster seems to have a really intense interest in Isabel's past which she doesn't like it makes her uncomfortable and that combined with her insomnia is kind of making her question 
her own recollections of the night that her son disappeared and it's also bringing up terrible childhood memories from her past and of course it's also making her doubt who she can actually trust so this sounds like it might have a little bit of an unreliable narrator which I don't necessarily love but I'm absolutely willing to give this a shot since this is by Stacey Millingham and I did enjoy her debut. On January 17th, we have How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. So Grady Hendrix is a new author to me. I just read The Final Girl Support Group in November and really enjoyed it. And so when I saw that he had a new release coming out in 2023, I definitely wanted to add it to my list. I don't know really what this is about, but I think it's going to be a good fun time. I expect most of Grady Hendrix's books are probably a good fun time. He has a really good way of combining humor and horror and so I'm definitely down to give this a try. Also on the 17th we have What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. I believe this is Kate Alice Marshall's adult debut. I know that she has a couple of YA titles out and when I saw that she was releasing an adult debut I wanted to go ahead and look into it because once upon a time her YA books were on my radar until I started to really move away from that age range and so now that she has an adult book coming out I definitely want to give her a shot. This says they were 11 when they sent a killer to prison. They were heroes but they were liars. Naomi Shaw used to believe in magic. 22 years ago, she and her two best friends, Cassidy and Olivia, spent the summer roaming the woods, imagining a world of ceremony and wonder. They called it the goddess game. The summer ended suddenly when Naomi was attacked. Miraculously, she survived her 17 stab wounds and lived to identify the man who had hurt her. The girl's testimony put away a serial killer wanted for murdering six women. They were heroes and they were liars. For decades, the friends have kept a secret worth killing for. But now Olivia wants to tell and Naomi sets out to find out what really happened in the woods, no matter how dangerous the truth turns out to be. So that sounds really interesting and really fantastic. I kind of want to know the truth about what happened in the woods. Was the man that they sent away guilty or not? It sounds like he might have been a serial killer anyway, but was he guilty of the crime that they accused him of? So that sounds really excellent and I'm excited to go ahead and add that to my 2023 TBR. One that was recently brought to my attention, I think it was by Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand, is Locust Lane by Stephen Amidon. It says, for fans of Mystic River by Dennis Lehane and Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng, Stephen Amidon's Locust Lane is a taut and utterly propulsive story about the search for justice and the fault lines of power and influence in a seemingly idyllic town. Can anyone be trusted? So it sounds like there is a crime that happens. A woman is found dead and then this like prestigious wealthy kind of neighborhood closes ranks to maybe cover it up or tell lies about it and I'm, I'm down for that. I'm down for all the drama. I'm down for all of the secrets and rich people behaving badly. So this I tossed on there at the last minute because it did sound like something right up my alley. The last book that I have down for January comes out on January 31st and this is The Exiles by Jane Harper. This is the third book in her Detective Aaron Falk series. I have read the first two books in this series and I definitely do want to go ahead and read this one in 2023 so that I can be completely caught up with the series. So if you are also reading the Aaron Falk series, I wanted to go ahead and let you know that this is coming out so that you can put it on your TBR as well. Next, moving on into February. On the 7th, we have Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey. This is the very first book in a new series called A Vine Mess. I don't know how many books are going to be released in this series, but this is a rom-com. It sounds like it's going to be a grumpy sunshine romance with a professor as well as his bubbly neighbor and how they clash and probably their developing romance which sounds really sweet. I always love a good grumpy sunshine romance. Those are some of my favorite tropes to see in a romance. I'm still testing the waters out on Tessa Bailey. I read It Happened One Summer earlier this year and I enjoy it and I do plan on finishing the duology next year and I currently have window shopping on my TBR for December and if I do really enjoy that one I am more than willing to continue with Tessa Bailey. So when I saw that she had a new release I was like okay let's go ahead and put this on our radar and we'll see what we think. Also on the 7th we have Someone Else's Shoes by Jojo Moyes. Now I haven't read anything by Jojo Moyes since Me Before You came out. I once had her backlist on my radar and decided not to go ahead and bother with it and this is the first new release that she's put out that I've been interested in. It says Nisha Cantor lives the globetrotting life of the seriously wealthy until her husband announces a divorce and cuts her off. Nisha is determined to hang on to her glamorous life but in the meantime she must scramble to cope. She doesn't even have the shoes she was until moments ago standing in. That's because Sam camp and the bleakest point of her life has accidentally taken Nisha's gym bag but Sam hardly has time to worry about a lost gym bag. She's struggling to keep herself and her family afloat. When she tries on Nisha's six inch high Christian Lobaton red crocodile shoes the resulting jolt of confidence that makes her realize something must change and that thing is herself. Full of Jojo Moyes's signature humor, brilliant storytelling, and warm someone else's shoes is a story about how just one little thing can suddenly change everything. That sounds really heartwarming and sweet like there's going to be a lot of poignant life lessons and it definitely is on my radar and so I wanted to go ahead and mention it here. Also on the 7th, I have Codename Sapphire by Pam Jenoff. Pam Jenoff writes historical fiction, primarily World War II historical fiction, and that is what this one is as well. It says a woman must rescue her cousin's family from a train bound for Auschwitz in this riveting tale of bravery and resistance. And I am down for it.
for it. I read The Lost Girls of Paris by Pam Jenoff and so I'm definitely wanting to put this on my radar for 2023. The final book that I have here for February comes out on the 21st and it's The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. And so I believe this follows our main character Alex and she has wanted her whole life to become a published author but she's basically given up on that dream until she's given a once in a lifetime opportunity to attend an exclusive writing retreat that is being held by this very popular feminist author. And once everybody is there, once everybody's at the writing retreat, this author kind of drops a bomb on everyone. She says that while everyone is there, they have to write an entire novel from scratch. They can't continue a project that they were working on or anything of that nature. It has to be 100% from scratch. And whoever wins is going to earn this life-changing seven-figure publishing deal. So obviously it's going to be very high stakes and very, very competitive. And then I believe one of the writers goes missing and it's kind of about our main characters like fight for survival. This says it's a claustrophobic and propulsive thriller exploring the dark side of friendship and fame. So this might have some isolationist tropes in there because it's set on the retreat of the author that's hosting it. I always love a good isolation thriller. So this definitely was on my radar and this comes out on the 21st of February. All right, moving on into March. On the 7th, we have What Have We Done by Alex Finley. This says in one of the year's most anticipated thrillers, What Have We Done is a tale about the lives we leave behind and the secrets we carry with us forever. Both an edge of your seat thriller and a gut-wrenching coming of age story, What Have We Done cements Alex Finley as one of the new leading voices in thrillers today. And I have to know if Alex Finley lives up to the hype. I really do. So he's definitely going to be one that I try in 2023. This new release sounds fantastic and so I definitely wanted to go ahead and have it on my radar for next year. Coming out on March 14th is Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Q. Sutanto. She wrote Dial A for Aunties, which I haven't read, but it sounds like she writes cozy thrillers, and this one sounds fantastic. It follows a little old lady who comes downstairs to find a dead body in her tea shop, and she takes it upon herself to discover who murdered this man, and it just sounds like it's going to be really charming. I'm not really a cozy mystery type of person. I need a little bit more darkness. Okay, 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 I need a lot more darkness in my mystery thrillers. However, this just sounded really sweet and I wanted to go ahead and add it on here and keep it on my radar because I think it could be a good time and I'll give it a shot. On the 21st, we have The London Seance Society by Sarah Penner. So this one originally wasn't anything I was interested in, but Sarah Penner wrote The Lost Apothecary, which I enjoyed for the most part. It didn't blow me out of the water, but I enjoyed the premise of it. There were definitely things left to be desired about the execution, but I knew that I wanted to keep Sarah Penner in the back of my mind for when she released something else. And that is what she's doing here with The London Seance Society. So I believe I believe this is historical in nature entirely. In The Lost Apothecary, you had a past and a present timeline, but I think this might be set entirely in the past in the 1800s. It says, 1873, at an abandoned chateau on the outskirts of Paris, a dark seance is about to take place. Led by acclaimed spiritualist Vaudeline de Allaire, known worldwide for her talent in conjuring the spirits of murder victims to ascertain the identities of the people who killed them, she is highly sought after by widows and investigators alike. Lena Wicks has come to Paris to find answers about her sister's death, but to do so, she must embrace the unknown and overcome her own logic driven bias against the occult. When Vaudeline is beckoned to England to solve a high-profile murder, Lena accompanies her as an understudy, but as the women team up with the powerful men of London's exclusive seance society to solve the mystery, they begin to suspect that they are not merely out to solve a crime, but perhaps entangled in one themselves. That just sounds really interesting and really different from anything that I've ever read before. And so like I said, because she wrote The Lost Apothecary, I'm willing to go ahead and give this a shot, even though it is definitely a little bit outside of my comfort zone. So we'll see what she's able to do with it. The last book that I have on my radar is coming out on the 28th and it's called The Mostly True Story of Tanner and Louise by Colleen Oakley. Colleen Oakley again is another author that I'm going to be trying in 2023 and keeping her on my radar because I love the sound of a lot of her books. They just sound so different in terms of like the plot and how that she approaches them. And I believe this is a story that follows an older woman and a younger girl. And I love the concept of that. It follows our main character, Tanner. She is 21. She really has no life direction. She really has no ambition at all. She just kind of wants to stay around being lazy, but she can't because she needs money. And so she ends up as a caregiver for this elderly woman named Louise. And at first their relationship is kind of very distant. They kind of just ignore each other and don't really talk unless necessary until Tanner starts to notice some weird things about Louise. Let me read this to you. It says, why does Louise keep her garden shed locked up tighter than a prison? And why is the local news fixed on the suspect of one of the biggest jewelry heists in American history who looks eerily like Louise? And why does Louise suddenly appear in her room with a packed bag at 1 a.m. insisting that they leave town immediately? Thus begins the story of a not to be underestimated elderly woman and an aimless young woman who, if they can outrun the mistakes of their past, might just have the greatest adventure of their lives. So this definitely sounds fun 
touching. It does sound a little bit like Thelma and Louise, although probably not the same ending of that story, but this is definitely high up there on my radar. I'm excited to get to this. I'm excited to read other books by Colleen Oakley as well. This sounds fantastic and I'm glad to have it on my radar for 2023. Moving on into April on the 11th, we have The Only Survivor by Megan Miranda. The Only Survivor sounds like it's Megan Miranda attempting to capitalize on some of the really, really popular tropes that is going around these days, especially in like dark academia. It says a thrilling mystery about a group of former classmates who reunite to mark the 10th anniversary of a tragic accident only to have one of the survivors disappear, casting fear and suspicion on the original tragedy. Okay, so yes, they were former classmates. They are reuniting. A school is in there somewhere. So yeah, it definitely sounds like this might be Megan Miranda's attempt at dark academia or at least a thriller that is set around a school and a tragedy and classmates. So we're going to go ahead and see what she's able to do with this story. I'm a little bit nervous about it, but I did recently read The Last to Vanish and really enjoyed that. That's probably one of the stronger books that I read by her. So I'm hoping that they just continue to get better and better over time. Also on the 11th, we have Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Abby Jimenez is again another author that I am going to be trying in 2023 to know if I want to continue. I recently picked up Part of Your World because it has been so highly praised here on BookTube. And so I saw that she had this other new release coming out and I definitely wanted to go ahead and mention it here. It is definitely another romantic comedy. It sounds like this is going to contain the hate to love trope, which I'm all for. So it says Dr. Brianna Ortiz's life is seriously flatlining. Her divorce is just about finalized. Her brother's running out of time to find a kidney donor and that promotion she wants. Oh, that's probably going to the new man doctor who's already registering 80 freaking seven on Brianna's pain in my ass scale. But just when all systems are set to hate, Dr. Jacob Maddox completely flips the game by sending Brianna a letter. And it's a really good letter, like the kind that proves that Jacob isn't actually Satan. Worse, he might be this fantastically funny and subversively likable guy who's terrible at first impressions because suddenly he and Brie are exchanging letters, sharing lunch dates in her sob closet and discussing the merits of freakishly tiny horses. But when Jacob decides to give Brianna the best gift imaginable, a kidney for her brother, she wonders just how she can resist this quietly sexy new doctor, especially when he calls in a favor she can't refuse. That sounds ridiculously charming. Oh my gosh, I'm like swooning just sitting here reading that. So I can only imagine what it's going to be like to actually read that and to read part of your world. So I'm, I'm down, I'm all for it, yes. I'm really hoping that Abby Jimenez comes through and becomes another go-to kind of rom-com author for me. Another book that comes out on the 11th that is tentatively on my radar is Homecoming by Kate Morton. I read The Clockmaker's Daughter by Kate Morton and it was okay. It was a very long, almost tedious at points historical fiction. And even though I enjoyed it to an extent, I kind of pushed Kate Morton to the side. Like I wasn't sure if I wanted to continue, but this newest release sounds really intriguing to me. I'm just going to read this very brief last paragraph of the description. It says an epic novel that spends generations. Homecoming asks what we would do for those we love and how we protect the lives we tell. It explores the power of motherhood, the corrosive effects of tightly held secrets, and the healing nature of truth. Above all, it is a beguiling and immensely satisfying novel from one of the finest writers working today. I'm willing to go ahead and give Kate Morton another shot to see how I feel about it. This one did definitely intrigue me, which is why I wanted to put it on my radar, but I'm not 100% sold. So we're going to go ahead and see. Also, I was incorrect. It's not the 11th that this comes out. It is the 4th of April. On the 25th of April, we have The Last Word by Taylor Adams. Taylor Adams wrote one of my favorite isolation thrillers of all time called No Exit. So I'm excited to see what he does with this one. So this follows our main character, Emma. She lives in isolation with her dog on this little beach house in Washington State. And one day she reads this horror novel that she thinks is awful. And so she goes and she gives the book a one star review. And it actually pulls her into an argument with this author and then some weird things start to happen around Emma and Emma really starts to wonder if this author could be a bit unhinged and stalking her so she begins to look into him and his life and his background and she finds that the novel that she read is not the only novel that he's written he's written 16 other tales that all contain very gruesome subject matter about stalking and murder so she wants to know who is this guy and are these tales maybe based on actual fantasies that he has or things that he's done it sounds fantastic and again it's going to contain isolation in one way or another. Taylor Adams does that so, so well, and I'm extremely excited to get into this one. And then the final book coming out in April that's on my radar that's also coming out on the 25th is Happy Place by Emily Henry. Emily Henry is very quickly becoming a booktube darling in terms of rom-coms. I read Beach Read and The People We Meet on Vacation. Both were excellent and I'm going to be reading Book Lovers in December. So I definitely have Happy Place on my radar as well. It says a couple who broke up months ago make a pact to pretend to still be together for their annual week-long vacation with their best friends and this glittering and wise new novel from New York Times bestselling author Emily Henry. So it sounds 
sounds like this might be a second chance romance. So I'm down for it. I probably will read anything that Emily Henry writes going forward, especially if I enjoy book lovers as much as I think that I'm going to. So definitely wanted to put it on this list. It looks like I only have two for the month of May. On May 2nd, Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune comes out. Carly Fortune wrote Every Summer After, which I now have on my TBR and definitely plan to get to in 2023 in anticipation of this new release. I believe they're standalones. I, I believe they have nothing to do with each other, but I definitely want to read this debut before I get into her new release. It says, A random connection sends two strangers on a day-long adventure where they make a promise one keeps and the other breaks with life-changing effects in this breathtaking new novel. I feel like Carly Fortune might write some harder hit romance type stories so they're not necessarily light and fluffy rom-coms and I'm always looking for that. I love those harder hitting elements so I am absolutely excited to give this as well as Every Summer After a try. Christina Lauren's newest release also comes out in May on May 16th. It's called The True Love Experiment. It says sparks fly when a romance novelist and a documentary filmmaker join forces to craft the perfect Hollywood love story and take both of their careers to the next level, but only if they can keep the chemistry between them from taking the whole thing off script. Christina Lauren typically does write romance novels. Um, some are more harder hitting than others. Some are just really light, fluffy, good times, fast paced, quick to get through. Others do have some more harder hitting elements to it. I'm not entirely sure what category this is going to fall under, but but I'm here for it. I will probably read anything by Christina Lauren, even though they are definitely hit or miss for me. I don't always love what I read by them, but I'm definitely willing to give this one a shot. Moving on into June, we have Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. This is the next in her Women in STEM novel. So I have read Love Hypothesis and Love on the Brain. I didn't love Love on the Brain like I liked the Love Hypothesis. So we're going to see how Love Theoretically does for me and whether or not I want to continue with Allie Hazelwood. So it's absolutely on my radar for 2023. Then on the 20th, we are getting the newest release by Riley Sager. Of course, I'm going to read everything that Riley Sager writes, so I'm highly anticipating this newest release from him. This one is actually sounds like it's based on the Lizzie Borden murders, so let me go ahead and read this to you. It says, at 17, Lenora Hope hung her sister with a rope, stabbed her father with a knife, took her mother's happy life. It wasn't me, Lenora said, but she's the only one not dead. It says, now reduced to a schoolyard chant, the Hope family murder shocked the main coast one bloody night in 1929. While most people assume 17-year-old Lenora was responsible, the police were never able to prove it. Other than her denial after the killing, she has never spoken publicly about that night, nor has she set foot outside Hope's End, the cliffside mansion where the massacre occurred. It's now 1983 and home health aide Kit McDear arrives at a decaying Hope's End to care for Lenora after her previous nurse fled in the middle of the night. In her 70s and combined to a wheelchair, Lenora was rendered mute by a series of strokes and can only communicate with Kit by tapping out sentences on an old typewriter. One night, Lenora uses it to make a tantalizing offer. I want to tell you everything. This sounds fantastic. It sounds, uh, this sounds fantastic. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't in love with The House Across the Lake. It's probably one of my least favorites by Riley Sager and Survive the Night wasn't his best either. So this past couple of releases haven't been amazing, but he's another hit or miss author for me. He runs the gamut in terms of whether he's going to get a two star or a four star from me. I don't think I've ever rated anything by him five star yet, but his books are highly entertaining. I can just eat them up and whether or not I end up loving the plot overall or not I still want to continue with him as an author and I'm absolutely hyped to get to this one. Also on the 20th, we have Business or Pleasure by Rachel Lynn Solomon. I have several of her other adult rom-coms on my list that I want to go ahead and read and see if I want to continue with her in the future. But since I saw that she had a new release coming out, I wanted to go ahead and mention it here because it sounds like it's going to be steamy. It says a ghostwriter and a struggling actor help each other on the page and in the bedroom in this steamy romantic comedy from the New York Times bestselling author of The X Talk. So I will absolutely be moving into this book if I decide that I want to continue with Rachel Lynn Solomon as an author but for now she is definitely on my radar for 2023. I only have one listed for July at the moment. It comes out on the 25th and it's called I Did It For You by Amy Engel and I'm super excited to see another book release from Amy Engel. She wrote The Roanoke Girls which was a southern gothic nightmare that my twisted little soul absolutely ate up. I also really enjoyed The Familiar Dark and I think I'm going to like this one as well. So it follows our main character Greer and 14 years prior to the start of the story her sister Eliza was brutally murdered and it really shattered her family. Nothing was ever the same but now in that same area that same hometown another similar murder has taken place and Greer is going to return to her hometown to see if she can uncover what is going on and what happened to her sister. So I love that this has the reluctant return home trope which I love so very much in suspense thrillers. This is Amy Engel. I will read absolutely everything that she writes going forward because I feel like she does darkness very very well. The Bruno Girls and The Familiar Dark were absolutely dark suspense thrillers and so I'm excited to go ahead and jump into this one. Moving into August, on the first we have Gone Tonight by Sarah Pacannon. Now I've only read Sarah Pacannon as part of 
of her duo with Greer Hendricks in suspense thrillers that they typically write. So it looks like she's now branching out on her own and she is writing her own suspense thriller. It says, Catherine Sterling thinks she knows her mother. Ruth Sterling is quiet, hardworking, and lives for her daughter. All her life, it's been just the two of them against the world, but now Catherine is ready to spread her wings, move from her home, and begin a new career. And Ruth Sterling will do anything to prevent that from happening. Ruth Sterling thinks she knows her daughter. Catherine would never rebel, would never question anything about her mother's past or background. But when Ruth's desperate quest to keep her daughter by her side begins to reveal cracks in Ruth's carefully constructed world, both mother and daughter begin a dance of deception. Okay, so it sounds like it's going to be a very complicated, secretive mother-daughter relationship, and I'm here for it. I want to see what Sarah Buchanan can do on her own outside of the duo, so I'm on the lookout for this one. I'm also excited that Lisa Jewell has a new release coming out in August on the 8th. It is called None of This is True. I only discovered Lisa Jewell this year, and I think I've read three books by her so far, and I've enjoyed all of them immensely. They are just a great reading time. I feel like she's great at doing uh, equal combination of character driven and plot driven narratives and I found you was one that I just ate up in like 24 hours it is an absolutely bingeable read and so I am super excited to read more from her in the future the little tiny blurb says that this is about a woman who finds herself the subject of her own popular true crime podcast so it's got a true crime podcast element and that's all you have to say that is a buzzword for me and then she becomes the subject of her own podcast which okay I'm down say no more I'm not gonna read any further it's Lisa Jewell there's a true crime podcast you have me sold and so even though I, of course, will not read this as soon as it comes out, I still consider this a highly anticipated 2023 release. Also on the 8th, we have Dark Corners by Megan Golden. I have read both The Night Swim and Escape Room by Megan Golden, and I'm absolutely thrilled to see another release come out from her in 2023. This actually follows a character that we met in The Night Swim. It follows the main character, Rachel, who herself is also a true crime podcaster, and so there was a bit of a podcast element in The Night Swim. It sounds like there might be another one in this book as well. So it says there was a popular social media influencer who disappeared after visiting a suspected serial killer, and the FBI has reached out for Rachel's help to find the missing influencer because her true crime podcast has definitely been influential in getting innocent people freed and correct people convicted and so it sounds like Rachel is going to be involved in another investigation and it sounds fantastic. I'm absolutely excited about this one. And then the very last book that I have on this list for the time being is a September release. It comes out on September 28th and it is by Beth O'Leary. It is called The Wake Up Call. Now again, Beth O'Leary is another one who I have multiple books on my TBR from, but I've never yet read one of her books. They sound like they're going to be fantastic. Maybe not necessarily romantic comedies, but really great contemporaries or maybe even romances. And this one sounds great as well. It says, two sworn enemies, a failing hotel, one chance to save the season. The busiest season of the year and Forest Manor Hotel is quite literally falling apart. So when Izzy and Lucas are given the same shift on the hotel's front desk, they have no choice but to put their differences aside and see it through. The hotel won't stay float beyond Christmas without some sort of miracle. But when Izzy returns a guest's lost wedding ring, the reward convinces management that this might be the way to fix everything. With four rings still sitting in the lost property, the race is on for Izzy and Lucas to save their beloved hotel and their jobs. So again, this sounds fantastic. It sounds like there's going to be another sweet romance involved. And this might actually take place at Christmas time, which might be a great read to put on next December's TBR as well if I read from Beth O'Leary and decide that I want to continue with her as an author. All right, y'all. So those are currently all of the 2023 new releases that are on my radar. They're the ones that have piqued my interest. They are either by authors that I have loved and trusted in the past and want to continue with or authors I definitely plan to try in 2023 and might want to continue with. So I hope I was able to put some great books on your radar for 2023 please comment down below and let me know if I've missed some that you think that I would really enjoy or please just comment down below and let me know what some of your most anticipated releases are I would love to hear that from you and as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because I would sure love to see you in my next video bye guys